Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is saying he is the I am of the days of Moses. When when the Lord said to Moses to go unto the children of Israel, Moses asked him, well, what's your name? What am I going to tell them when they ask me, what's your name? And he said, I am that I am. Tell them that I am have sent you. So, we're going to cover a lot of material. And... Um, Turn your Bible to the book of Jude, and I hope you have a King James, because if you don't, uh, you're hurting yourself spiritually. And yeah, I know, you'll hear people say, oh, well, you're in that King James Bible only cult. Well, I like the Geneva too, so I'm not King James only. But you got to ask yourself a question. Do you trust the Greek churches that gave us the Greek text manuscripts of the New Testament, where the King James and Geneva New Testaments came from, or do you trust the Vatican, which is where the NIV and the ESV and the NASB and all the rest of those uh, so-called Bibles come from? If you trust the Vatican to give you the Bible, then go to the Catholic Church. Be part of them. Go go, take a pilgrimage to Rome and watch the Pope. You know, go listen to him. Of course, you may not know Italian, but uh, yeah. But hey, that's just my suggestion. And I don't know if the church at Rome has been uh, exactly when it was uh, infiltrated and destroyed, but... Uh, in the days of Paul, it was all right, but uh, not anymore. So, all right, book of Jude. What is Jude? Well, Jude is the Greek rendering of Judah, or some say Jew, but in German, they call it Juden, J-U-D-E-N. That's their way of saying Jude, Juden. Uh, and if I'm not pronouncing it quite correct, well, I haven't been in Germany since the 70s, so you'll have to forgive me. So, verse 1. Well, Jude chapter 1, verse 1. There's only one chapter in Jude. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James. You know who James was? He had a mother named Mary and a father named Joseph. Mm, and Jude is his brother. Yeah. They grew up with a guy named Jesus. What do you say? What do you say? So, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified, that means set apart, sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. See, if you are of the whosoever will persuasion, you think everybody's being called. Is everybody being called? I don't know. Jesus speaking in Matthew chapter 22 and verse 14. Jesus says, for many are called, many, not all, for many are called, but few are chosen. Hmm. Many are called. Why didn't he say everybody's called? You know, why not? So, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Mercy unto you. Where's this mercy come from? 
God the Father, because of his son Jesus, were given mercy and peace and love be multiplied. Verse 3. Beloved, when I gave you all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. See, there is a salvation that is common to those that are called, and that's through Jesus Christ. But it's not common as in everywhere. You might say, uh, you know, rocks are common on the ground. But Jesus Christ was anything but common. He was born of a virgin. He was God manifested in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16 Jesus was anything but common. But our salvation is common to everyone that is saved. So, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith. I'd like to think I'm doing that. Which was once delivered unto the saints. Verse 4. Listen to this carefully. This is my opening verse. For there are, not were, not will be, for there are, past, present, and future. For there are certain men crept in unawares. I, I might have, instead of crept, maybe they slithered. I, you know, them serpents. I, I don't know. For there are certain men crept in unawares. Who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Do you know what it means to be ordained? Let's find out what ordained means. Ordained means appointed. Uh, if the school board, you, you got a bachelor's degree in education and you got appointed by the school board to be a teacher, well, you'd be kind of, well, ordained generally has reference to ministerial or pastoral functions. So it means appointed, instituted, or established. Yeah. Hmm. For there are certain men crept in unawares. What do you mean they were crept in unawares? They were creeping in unaware to the church. And these devils who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Wow. Think about it. They were born for condemnation ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. What is lasciviousness? It's a uh, wicked sin. How are, how do they turn the grace of God into lasciviousness? Oh, glad you asked that question. Real simple. Okay. In Romans chapter six, verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Oh, Galatians 3, 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. 
But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. See, you ever heard anybody ever say that um, grace, grace is a license to sin? Oh, we're not under the law anymore. So I could be a hitman for the mafia. Pays really good money, you know. Yeah, but I believe in Jesus, so I'm going to be saved. Praise a Jesus. Uh, I don't think it works like that. But this is what he's talking about. Turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 5, Jude. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. Now, this is talking about the book of Exodus under Moses when they left Egypt on the first Passover. Verse 6. Uh, verse 6 and 7. Um, 6, 7, and 8, I guess. This has reference to the book of Genesis and Genesis chapter 6. Well, verse 6, Jude 1, 6. And the angels, the fallen angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. Uh, yeah, they left because they were booted out. He, the Lord, hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of that great day. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. And there was. People will tell you that this is in the future, but, you know, was. If I told you I was a rock and roll stoner in my teen years, uh, is that future? No, because I'm in my 60s now. I'm an old guy. I'm not a rock and roll stoner anymore. No. I was a rock and roll stoner. No, I'm not now. But in verse 7, and there was, past tense, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not. The dragon and his angels fought, but they didn't prevail. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven because they were booted out. Get out of here, you bunch of devils. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent. Huh. See, this is what you call figures of speech. Dragon, serpent, you know, figures of speech. Like when a guy on the beach sees a, an attractive looking woman in a bathing suit and he goes, Wow, look at that fox. Uh, is she a canine with four legs and a tail? Uh, no, I don't think so. But you get the idea. Now, if you don't know who the serpent was, in Genesis chapter 3 that was talking to Eve, well, here you go. Verse 9, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent. Why was he old? Because he'd been around for a long, long time. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. And there's actually people I'll tell you the devil and Satan is not the same. Well, argue with John, who was an apostle who spent time with Jesus. And the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. That's you. That's me. That's all of us. All of us are deceived in some way, shape, or form. 
some of us a lot more than others. So, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Oh, yeah. They're kicked out of heaven. Booted out. Boom. All right. They're going to the earth. Uh, wow. So, we get to deal with them, huh? See, a lot of people don't realize it, but this is... Our lives here on earth are a test. And there's no grading on a curve. It's either pass or fail. Pass the kingdom, fail, lake of fire. Simple as that. I went to college for two years. Well, secular college. And uh, if in lieu of a letter grade, you could choose pass or fail. You know. If you wished. But there's no letter grade that I know of for the kingdom. It's either pass or fail. Well, maybe there is a type of letter grade. You know, some people will be more responsible than others. So we'll see what happens. All right, let's go to Isaiah 14. Yeah, baby. Isaiah 14. I got an entire playlist on the book of Isaiah where I do a commentary on the whole, every chapter. Uh, Isaiah is a, an incredibly neglected book. I mean, Isaiah is the most quoted book in the New Testament from the Old Testament. I Let me rephrase that. Isaiah is the most quoted book Old Testament book in the New Testament by Jesus and everybody else that I know of. So, Isaiah 14, verse 9. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations all they shall speak and say unto thee art thou also become weak as we art thou become like unto us now who are they talking to the kings of the earth mortal flesh uh they're talking to the devil here are you become weak like we verse 11 Thy pomp. Uh, what is pomp? Hmm, let's take a look. This is why I love Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Not the modern Webster's, which is uh, published now by the Antichrist. Webster was a language scholar, a linguist. He knew over, from what I understand, over 20 languages fluently he could go almost anywhere in europe and converse with anybody just about and he was a believer he knew hebrew and he knew greek and he knew latin and he used bible terms and words in his word definitions pomp a noun uh, a procession distinguished by grandeur and splendor, a show of magnificence, a parade. Um, yeah, so it's like the, the pomp of a Roman triumph. You know, the general comes back after conquering Spain and he comes back with all the glory and like a parade showing his magnificence. That's pomp. You ever heard anybody say, oh, he's a pompous, he's a pompous ass. I've heard that before. Back to Isaiah. Thy pomp is brought down to the grave. So Satan's magnificence is going to be brought down to the grave 
and the noise of thy voils, V-I-O-L-S. That's a musical instrument, people. You ever heard of a violin? I suspect that's what it is. The worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. Where do worms live? Well, they live in the ground. And what do worms do? Well, they worms hang out with, uh, they live amongst dead things. Oh, yeah. Things that are dead. Physically, maybe spiritually. Mm, what do you say? Let's read the words of Jesus in Mark chapter 9 real quick. Verse 41. For whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name. And that name is not Yeshua HaMashiach. No. Because ye belong to Christ. Verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me. It is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were cast into the sea. If you don't know it, a millstone generally is like 70 pounds. That's about 30 kilograms for you EU folks. Uh, if, could you swim with a 70 pound, 30 kilogram stone wrapped around your neck? But you'd be better off because you'd only die physically. Jesus said you'd be better off if you were drowned in the sea. Oh, yeah. But you ain't going to be just drowned in the sea. You're going to wake up in, the, in fire. Verse 43. If thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched. Wow. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off, for it is better to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that shall never be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Where the worm dieth not. Hmm. Wow. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. And of course, if you listen to the Jehovah's Witnesses, hell fire is just the... Uh, the garbage dump in Jerusalem, it was a valley where they burned the garbage. To them, that was hell. Verse 48. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Let's go back to Isaiah 11, 14, 11. Thy pomp is brought down to the grave in the noise of thy vials. The worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. Oh, how art thou fallen from heaven? Oh, Lucifer. I've had people say, oh, Lucifer's not the devil and Satan. Well, who fell from heaven? Yeah, a lot of deceivers in this world. And if I'm teaching deception, I'm doing it unknowingly. Because I do not do it willingly. Uh, that's the job of the TV preachers. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? And then people will say, oh, uh, Lucifer is a Latin word. It don't belong in the Bible. Uh, so maybe taco doesn't belong in the English language because it's Spanish. What do you say? See, my English professor in college told me that uh, English was an amalgamation, a mix of many different languages. Probably about 15% minimum of the words in English are derived from 
Latin. All those legal terms that lawyers talk about, that comes from Latin. All the words in modern medicine comes from Greek. I mean, you know, come on. And the word Lucifer has reference to light bearer. Why is that? Well, Paul has the answer, and boy, they hate Paul too. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13. Corinth was a city in Greece which had a church that Paul evidently had established. Or if he didn't establish it, he helped it grow spiritually. You see, the New Testament was written in Greek. Yeah. Because the you-know-whos were the ones trying to kill the words of Jesus. So, all right. 2 Corinthians 11, 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Lucifer. Uh, if you look on your light bulbs, in the package it'll say how many lumens it is. A lumen is an, a, a measurement of the amount of light it produces. Perhaps you've heard of, um, we need some illumination in this room for the photographer. I mean... <sighs> Latin people, and people say, oh, it don't belong in English because it's a Latin word. False apostle, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Yeah. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers, whose ministers, the devil, Satan's ministers. If his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. You do evil things, you will get a reward of evil. You do good things, Christ will redeem you, reward you, I should say, reward you with good things. Yeah, you know, when you give a cup of cold water to somebody in the name of Christ, yeah, you'll get a reward. Let's go back to Isaiah 12. Isaiah 14, 12. How art thou fallen from heaven? Who is kicked out? Revelation 12. The devil and Satan, that old serpent, the dragon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. O Lucifer, son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground, which did, didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon Sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High, the Most High God. Did you notice that? I will. If you listen to TV preachers, that's positive confession. I will be rich. I will be strong. I will be this and that and the other. You know, speak the word and it'll come to pass. Sounds like witchcraft to me, but uh, didn't work for Satan. He said it five times. I will. Verse 15. 
yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Oh, yeah. You wanted to be king of the hill in heaven, but you're going to be brought down to hell. Oh, yeah. Let's go back to Jude, verse 6. Uh, and the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. So he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Listen to this. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah. Why is he? He's talking about the angels and then he changes talking about Sodom and Gomorrah. Even as. See, Jude is making a connection here between the angels which kept not their first estate and Sodom and Gomorrah. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh is anal, you know what, you know what Sodom was named after? Well, the, the act of, you know, named after Sodom. Um, is that going after strange flesh? Or are they referring to the fallen angels interbreeding, mating marriage with human women in Genesis 6? Oh, Chaplain Bob, that, that, that can't happen. They'll tell you that every time. But if you read in Genesis 6 about the sons of God marrying the daughters of men, having giants for children. I mean, since when do believing men marry unbelieving women and then have giants for children? Huh? And then God says, oh, I'm sick of this. I'm going to destroy the world in the flood. Uh, wouldn't God say, hey, believing men, preach to your unbelieving wives? No. No. He just said, oh, I'm going to flood the world. Let them drown. Yeah. And since when do believers marrying unbelievers have giants for children? I mean, come on. But not only that, so all the men are righteous and all the women are wicked and unrighteous? Really? I mean, this is the nonsense that the modern church world teaches today. Yeah. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah. Now I wonder, did the fallen angels teach uh, mankind to do to use men to use men for pleasure instead of using women that God created as a helpmate for us? I I don't know, but it seems very possible. Uh, the Bible may not explicitly say yes no maybe but that's my guess even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the likes and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire how would you like to be living in Sodom and Gomorrah as a wicked person, fire rains down from the sky, burns your fleshy body up, and then you and then you wake up in the flames of hell. Not very nice. Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh. They're talking about angels here, people. Unlike also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion. What is dominion? Government. And speak evil of dignities. 
Yet Michael the archangel. Now, you know, here it is in verse 6, they're talking about angels. And then in verse 9, they're talking about Michael the archangel. When contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. Yeah. Wow. Now I got an entire playlist on the angels that sinned. If anybody wants proof that uh, Genesis 6 is not about believing men marrying unbelieving women, just compare Job 38 about the sons of God shouting for joy at the creation of the earth, the foundation of the earth. You know, Adam didn't come until after the earth was formed, since he was taken from the dust of the earth, and God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and he became a living soul. Adam is not shouting for joy in Job 38 before he was even existed. So they have to be angels. They have to be. There's no other way around it. But boy, Satan's uh, children do not want us to know this. Oh, anybody can be saved, they'll tell you. That's funny. Esau was rejected and all his children. Read Malachi 1. God hated Esau. Yeah. God hated Esau. You think Esau is going to be saved in the kingdom? You think he's got a... Well, I believe in Jesus. Read James chapter 1 or James chapter 2. Satan believes in God. Absolutely. You think he's going to be saved? I don't think so. Men of old ordained to this condemnation. Didn't we read that in Jude? Absolutely. Go to Ezekiel 28. I'm giving you a I'm giving you a lesson on Satanism. Now I don't like it, but it needs to be taught. And when you've spent as many hours studying the Bible as I have, you'll you won't argue with me. Not that I have it all figured out, I don't. If I ever get it all figured out, I'll let you know, but until then, I'm still searching also. However, Ezekiel 28, 12. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Whoa, wait a minute. How can this king of Tyrus have been in Eden, the garden of God? This was probably hundreds of years afterward, if not thousands. I don't know exactly where Ezekiel's timeline is, but, uh, it, you know, Thou has been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was I covering. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of, workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes, you know, wind instrument, was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created ah see they want people want you to think that this is talking about an earthly human king of tyrus who was created and not born angels unless of course you're a mormon then god the father did somebody and then had all these angels for children of which uh, they teach that Jesus and Satan are brothers. Boy, I tell you what, I sure wouldn't want to tell 
uh, God the Father or, or Jesus that in the day of judgment. Uh-uh. No. Uh-uh. Not me, buddy boy. Not me, girly girl. In the day that thou wast created. In the book of John, the Bible plainly teaches that Jesus created all things. But, you know, Mormons don't believe the Bible. They believe the, the Book of Morons. I mean, Mormons. Which was given to them by an angel called Moron I. M O R O N I. Yeah. Moron. Would you want to listen to an angel called Moron? Uh, you'd have to be, I guess. So. Which is a shame because I, I I really I always enjoyed um, Randy Bachman's uh, musical uh, talent. I heard he's a Mormon or was I don't know. If you don't know who that is, uh, the Guess Who and Bachman Turner Overdrive. Perhaps that rings a bell. Yeah, spent many hours listening to Bachman Turner Overdrive and the Guess Who. So, in the day that thou wast created not born 14 listen to this thou art the anointed cherub that covereth anointed cherub you're talking about a high-ranking angel and what does it cover i think it's covering the throne of god you know the mercy seat that had the two angels with the wings pointing towards each other you know that uh what the uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark or whatever garbage Hollywood put out. I think I think Satan was one of them. One of those two angels. Probably the one on the left. <laughs> uh, that's a joke, people. I know. I laugh at my own jokes. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. And they're going to tell you this King of Tyrus was a human. Does any of this sound like it's talking about a human? But Satan was the king behind the King of Tyrus. He was the satanic king behind the earthly king. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God, Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created. See, that's two times God said that this being was created. Till iniquity, wickedness, evil, sin, till iniquity was found in thee. Wow. Wow. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. Well, what happens if there was a Revelation 12, if there was a war in heaven? Isn't there violence in every war? Absolutely. They have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. What do you think Eve was talking to in the garden? A snake hanging from an apple tree? No. She was talking to the anointed cherub that whose heart was lifted up in pride because of his beauty. She's looking at probably one of the, if not the, most beautiful creation of the God, the Father, and Christ. Think she was impressed? I think so. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. Remember, Satan's called an angel of light, Lucifer. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. 
Ooh. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore I will bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. Wow. Pretty harsh language, huh? All right, let's take a look at Job chapter 1. Some of the best scholars of the Bible that I know of, and I do not claim to be one of them, uh, claim that the book of Job is the oldest book in the Bible, and I didn't used to think so, but I think so it is now. I, I really do. I think Job is the oldest first book of the scriptures. Now, let's take a look. Let's skip down Job 1 and verse 6. Now, if you don't know, well, let's read verse 6. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And there'll be people say, well, these can't be angels because they were kicked out of heaven. And here it is, they're presenting themselves before the Lord. Well, that's assuming, of course, they're assuming. You know what they say about assuming and making an ass out of you and me. Um, that's, they're, they're assuming that the Lord's in heaven here. What happens if the Lord's on the earth? Couldn't the angels that were kicked out of heaven present themselves before the Lord? Absolutely, they could. Now, if you have any question why these sons of God are angels, let's go read Job 38 real quick. Verse 1. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? In other words, there's no light in your speech and you're talking stuff you don't know anything about. Gird up now thy loins like a man. In other words, put your pants on like a man. For I will demand of thee and answer thou me. Oh yeah, I'm going to ask you some questions. I want you to answer me. Verse 4, where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Where were you when I made the earth, huh? Declare if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who stretched the line upon it? Uh, stretching a line upon it. That's a carpentry term. You know, you, they, they stretch a line so that when they build a wall, the wall's straight. You know, they take the string and they, they make it tight. Verse 6, whereupon on their foundations fast, uh, thereof fastened. You know, where, where the, where's the foundation of the earth fastened to? Uh, what's it connected to? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? Now, I, I did an entire Bible study on cornerstone. Jesus Christ is the cornerstone, but uh, yeah, if you ever go to a like an airport or something, they got the Masonic Lodge says, oh yeah, we, we laid the cornerstone for this. Um, the cornerstone is very important because if you lay it wrong, the house is not going to be square. So, so God here is talking about the foundations and the cornerstone of the earth. Verse 7, when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Now it's talking about the foundation or the creation of the earth. The sons of God shout for joy. Yeah, Adam didn't come until six days after the earth was created. 
he could not have been there to shout for joy. He didn't exist yet. Or even if you want to stretch it and say, well, his soul existed, but he didn't have a body. And I don't know. It's kind of, is it kind of hard to shout for joy when you don't have a body? I, I don't know. At least not in this life. I don't know. Who are these sons of God? Well, who was their father? If God was their father, who are these sons of God? They're angels, people. They're angels. Job 1.6 Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Ah, oh, the sons of God came to present themselves to the Lord, and Satan's also among them. There it sh that should be one of your clues who these people are, or whatever, yeah. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Where are you coming from, Satan? What's up, big dog? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Yeah, he's tr trampling it down. That's what he's doing. Verse 8. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? That there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. Escheweth hatred of evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and says, huh, Doth God fear, doth Job fear God for naught? Does Job fear you for nothing? Ha! Hast thou not made an hedge about him? A hedge, you know, like a fence, a wall. Oh, yeah. What's that, what's that hedge doing? What's that wall doing? It's keeping Satan out. Hast not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about, and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. Oh yeah, everything he touches is blessed because of you. Verse 11. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. Oh yeah? Oh yeah, God, let me let me try this guy. Ha <laughs> ha. I'll, I'll show you what he really thinks about you. Let me try and test him. Now, people, let's have a modern-day spiritual application. Satan is on this earth to try and test us, just like he tested Job probably around 6,000 years ago, around about. We are going to have the same treatment, if you ask me. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. I wonder how many pre-trib rapture people will end up denying Jesus when they find out that they might have to die for their faith. I wonder. Well, God promised us the pre-trib rapture. We wouldn't be here. We would never have to suffer. Oh, really? Why don't you read the book of Acts? How many people died for their faith in the book of Acts? Hmm. Well, God's not a wife beater. Oh, really? Huh. Jesus said, if you deny me before men, that I would deny you before the Father and his angels. Deny. I never knew ye. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Get out of here. I don't know you. That's the modern Bob translation. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. Oh yeah, Satan, I accept your challenge. 
Well, that's the Bob commentary, but verse 12. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. Oh yeah, you, you can take anything he has, but you can't take his life. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them, and the Sabaeans fell upon them and took them away. Uh, so your oxen and your uh, donkeys were... Uh, they're gone. They were stolen by the Sabaeans. And the best that I know is the Sabaeans were uh, Arabic, kind of, that area. Do you realize that anybody that's not an Israelite or in the Lord can be possessed of a devil, demon possession, Every single one. Yeah. How many times did Jesus cast out devils in his ministry? I don't know. I've never counted it, but it was more than once. More than twice. More than three times. And the Sapiens pell upon them and took them all away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven. Whoa, dude. The fire of God is fallen from heaven? Uh, is this fire really from God or is it from Satan? I think it's from Satan. You see, Satan has power. Only what God allows. But Satan absolutely has power. Matter of fact, um, let's take a look. Let's go to Revelation 13 real quick. I want to show you the fire thingy. I guess we'll read from verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea. Sea. Hmm. Oh, uh, symbols and figures of speech in the Bible. Oh, yeah. Let's take a look at that. All right, what is this beast rising up out of the sea? Well, if you listen to the, if you look at the Jehovah's Witnesses, they'll have this multi-headed dragon kind of thing rising up from the sea, you know, sort of like Godzilla, you know. Uh, and that's where people get screwed up. You know, they look at pictures. Now, what is the sea? What is the sea made out of? It's made out of water, right? Absolutely. So let's take a look at something real quick. Revelation 17 and 11. And the beast, ah, the beast. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seven and goeth and do Perdition. What does perdition mean? It means the fall. Judas Iscariot was called the son of perdition. He was born to fall. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called, called, and chosen, and faithful. And what's the Lamb? That's Jesus, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. John the Baptist was baptizing, saw Jesus coming, and says, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Figure of speech, people. Jesus is not a four-legged 
creature with wool. Sorry. So, the beast and these kings are going to make war with the lamb. The lamb's going to overcome them because he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Verse 15. And he said unto me, The waters which thou sawest, the waters, what is a sea made out of? Water, right? The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth, you know, Mystery Babylon, the whore, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. The water, the sea, where this beast rises up are people, multitudes, nations, and tongues. But the Jehovah's Witnesses want, you know, Godzilla rising up out of the ocean. Fools. There's no light in these people. Let's go back to Revelation 13, verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Get the idea? Figures of speech. Having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast, which I saw, was like unto a leopard, and his feet was as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Why is the mouth the mouth of a lion? What was Jesus called? The lion of the tribe of Judah. This guy's going to be speaking like he's Christ. And the dragon, you know, the devil, Satan, yeah, the serpent. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Ah, this is where the beast gets his power from, from Satan. And it'll become apparent why Job won in a minute. So... The dragon gave him his power, his seat, and great authority. Verse 3, And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. It's going to sound like a, a resurrection, I guess. And they worshipped the dragon. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And the answer is, no human. And there was given on him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power, power, power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. This is the tribulation period, people. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name. And that name is not Yeshua HaMashiach. Blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Oh, but we're not going to be here. We're going to be fly away in the pre-trib rapture. We Idiots. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. I guess pre-trib rapture people are not saints. What do you say? What do you say? And to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. All that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Doesn't sound like everybody's name was written in the book of life, does it? No, it don't. If your name's not written in the book of life, you're going to worship the beast. Let's read that again. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. And then when you read this to somebody, they'll scream, Oh, you're a Calvinist! You're a Calvinist! Oh, you're a Calvinist! Uh, John Calvin taught election. You know, election as in God makes a choice between who he's going to save and who he's not. 
like that's some kind of a heresy. If Calvin understood this stuff, well, then he was right. He may not have been right about everything, but I don't know. I Why do people call me a Calvinist? I've never really studied Calvin's work. I don't read his books. I get my beliefs from the Bible. I got accused of getting all my doctrines from the book of Enoch. Do I get my doctrines from the book of... When have I quoted Enoch? Never. You know? Whose names are not written in the book of the life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. So if it's our lot in life to be taken captive, to be brought before councils and in the synagogues to be killed, that's what the Lord ordained for you. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here's the patience and faith of the saints. If they want to take you and and take you for your faith in Christ to die, go into captivity, go. But if you resist them and you kill with the sword or a nine millimeter or, you know, an AR or AK or whatever, that's how you'll be killed. Here's the patience and faith of the saints. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go to math. Uh, Mark, Mark 13, or no, yeah, Mark 13 real quick. Um, let's go to verse, uh, now let's read it from the beginning. And as they went out of the temple, one of his disciples came unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here? And Jesus answering said unto him, Seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now, Jesus said there wouldn't be one stone left upon another that's not going to be thrown down. In 70 AD, when the Roman army destroyed Jerusalem and the temple and burned it, all the gold in the temple melted and went in between the stones on the floor and everywhere else. So they took every stone and scraped all the gold and threw the stone down. Oh yeah. So either Jesus is a liar and the wailing wall is part of the temple or the wailing wall is not part of the temple. So if you want to believe the you-know-whos or do you want to believe Jesus? Well, I leave that up to you. Verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed, lest any man deceive you. Pay attention. Don't let anybody trick you. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. And when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of war, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in divers places, and there shall be famines and troubles these are the beginning of sorrows. Famine, trouble, earthquakes, wars. This is just the beginning, people. This is the introduction. Listen to this. Verse 9. But take heed. Pay attention. Listen. But take heed to yourselves. For they, who's they? Them that are not us. For they shall deliver you up to councils and in the synagogues. Oh, who hangs out in the synagogues? For they shall deliver you up to his councils and in the synagogues. Ye shall be beaten, beaten 
But God's not a wife, Peter Bob. You just don't understand the pre-trib rapture. Yeah, I do. I understand it perfectly. For they shall deliver you up to councils and in the synagogues. Ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. And the gospel must first be preached among all nations. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand. Don't think about it. Take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak. Uh, shall, what ye shall speak. Neither do ye premeditate. Don't think about what you're going to say. But whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye, for it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. The Lord's Holy Spirit is going to speak through his people as a testimony against these people. Yeah. I only had that happen to me one time in my life. A little girl asked me a question about the Bible when I was a brand new believer. And I didn't know the answer. And I opened my mouth to say, I don't know. But something else came out. And about a week or two later, what I had spoken, I found in the Bible, was the answer. I was like, whoa, dude. I was like, you know, when it happened, I was like, well, where did that come from? Woof. Only time in my life that's ever happened. But it's going to happen again. That's going to be your seal of approval. That's going to be your proof that you are headed for the kingdom when the Lord speaks through you. But whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye, for it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. Now the brother shall betray the brother to death, and the father, the son, and the children shall rise up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death. Why? Watch some of these cartoons. They're full of witchcraft. You know, the only time I really watch TV is to see what they're poisoning our kids with. I mean, there are Netflix and HBO and they're teaching our kids witchcraft. Oh, you believe in that Jesus stuff? You're old fashioned. Why, we have the power of magic. Harry Potter. Harry Potter outsold the Bible one year, at least one year that I know of, for a fact. Can you imagine that? Harry Potter books outsold the Bible. What does that tell you about our countries? We're in deep doo-doo, people. Deep a doo-doo. Verse 13. And ye shall be hated. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. And that name is not Yeshua HaMashiach. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. What is the most hated name on this world? Jesus. But he that shall endure unto the end. Oh, wait a minute. Chaplain Bob, that's wrong. Uh, uh, once saved, always saved. Haven't you heard that? Once you say a five-second sinner's prayer, you're saved forever. Once saved, always saved. Eternal security. But that's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of Dan by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, and that's the temple, let him that readeth understand, then let him that be in Judea flee to the mountains. And let him that is on the housetop not go down into the house, neither enter therein to take anything out of his house. And let him that is in the field not turn back again for to take up his garment. In other words, when you see the man of sin sitting in the temple proclaiming he's Christ or God, it's time to hit the road, people. Revelation 12 Flee to the wilderness because they're going to kill you. Some of us are going to have to die for our faith. Some of us will have to go to the wilderness to 
tell the others what in the world is going on. My preacher always taught me the preacher of rapture. Why aren't why are we still here? Because your pastor was a Masonic lying wolf, a devil. That's why he was a false prophet with uh, the emphasis on profit, P-R-O-F-I-T, as in money. Yeah. I know I'm skipping around a lot, but I'm trying to get a lot in here without, you know, spending five hours. I could do 10 hours of this stuff, people, but I, I don't have the time. My, my hands have been hurting. Carpal tunnel. Uh, they're not real bad, but when they start hurting, I got to back off and I'm working full time. And honestly, I'm afraid to say anything because you know who uh, they're watching my site. And if I say the wrong thing, they'll delete my channel and I want to leave it up as long as possible. Do you know I've had 2 million views? If the views are right, according to tube. Yeah. Revelation 13, 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast, beast, coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. Yeah, he's pretending to, he, he speaks like a lamb, like the lamb of God. Well, he had two horns like a lamb but he speaks as a dragon and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Listen to this carefully people. And he doeth great wonders, miracles, and he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire, fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. We're going to go back to Job 1. And guess what? This happened in the beginning. Well, close to the beginning. And he doeth great wonders, miracles, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Uh, Elijah did this too. And you better believe the false prophet is going to claim to be Elijah. Oh, yeah. There are the two witnesses, one of them is going to be Elijah. There's going to be two people walking on this earth claiming to be Elijah. Oh, yeah. Verse 14. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles. See, the false prophet is going to have power too. And he's going to do miracles. And he's going to deceive those people. And deceive with them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, an idol. In the Greek, that word is icon. Yeah. They're going to make an image, an idol to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Television. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Huh. And that no man might bell or, uh, buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. You don't have the mark. You ain't going to buy food. You ain't going to work. You ain't going to eat nothing of this world. Verse 18. Here is wisdom. Let him, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 600, three score and six, 666, 666. And I believe it's the microchip, people. I believe that's what the Lord showed me around 90 or 91 or so. Your passport, microchip, your driver's license, 
microchip. Your ATM and credit card, microchip. What if they take it out of the card and the passport and the driver license, stick it in your hand? Yeah. All right, let's go back to Job 1. Now, I remember Job was uh, blessed because of the Lord. And the Lord said, you know, to Satan, hey, uh, check out Job. He's he hates evil and he's a good and upright man. He's I, he's my he he's my boy. That's my boy right there. Satan said, oh, yeah. Yeah, well, you let me uh, mess around with him and he'll curse you to his face. That's the Bob translation. Remember that? Yeah. So God says, oh, yeah, I say you're wrong, Job. Or uh, I, I say you're wrong about Job, Satan. Satan, I think you're wrong about Job. So uh, go ahead, but you can't kill him. Everything else you can take from him. We'll see who's, uh, who's right and who's wrong. Can you... Can you put in a modern day application of this? Is Satan going to be allowed to persecute and test the church? Not if you believe in the pre trib rapture. No, God would never allow that. You know, that's the thing. These uh, dispensational, uh, I mean, dispensational uh, Zionist so called churchgoers. They don't read the old they don't read the Old Testament. Why, we're New Testament Christians, and they're proud of it too. How can you throw up the walls and roof of a house when you don't have a foundation? That's what they are. They have no foundation. Do you know the Old Testament is three quarters of the Bible? Three quarters. And they're going to read the end of the book and think they understand it. Idiots. Fools. All right, so, so here it is in Job 1, 15. And the Sabaeans fell upon them and took them away, you know, the asses and the oxen. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Verse 16. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God, the fire of God has fallen from heaven, and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Uh, was this fire from God or was this fire from Satan allowed of the Lord? I think it was. I think it was the same thing that the the uh, beast will be able to do. You know, the beast system in the Book of Revelation that we just read about the fire coming down from the sky and burning up his enemies. Oh yeah. So fire from God came down from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. Oh, yeah. And while he was yet speaking, there came also another and said the Chaldeans made out the uh, made out three bands and fell upon the camels and, and have carried them away. Yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Who are the Chaldeans? They were, uh, if you read the book of Daniel, they were one of the main components of Babylon. The Chaldeans, they were part of the Babylonian Empire. Verse 18. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness. Did Satan have power of the wind? And smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. 
all this bad stuff's happening. And if you keep reading this, Job's wife, wonderful woman that she seemed not to be, said, hey, Job, curse God and die. Uh, really? Curse God and die? You know, God, uh, Satan didn't do anything to Job's wife because she was already on his side, it seems like, you know? Oh boy, so much fun. So Satan has power over people, the Sabaeans and the Chaldeans, and probably more. Think about that every time your land is flooded with these heathen aliens. Yeah, but that's racism. Ooh, racism, racism. How many times have I heard that? He has power over the wind. And he can bring fire down from the sky as the Lord allows. Yeah. You know, I got an entire study on Matthew 24, parts 1 and 2. I also got a study on uh, Revelation chapter 12. You know, people, it's just, it's going to be bad, to say the least. All I know is the great majority of these so-called preachers work for the enemy. If they're on TV, you know they work for the enemy. Let's take a look at Job, or I'm sorry, Genesis. Genesis chapter 6. You know, the one of those uh, places that these New Testament Christians, so-called, will never bother reading. No, they just, you know... Why should I read the Old Testament? You know, that's that's too much trouble. I'm a New Testament Christian, they'll say. Ugh. Oh, well. You know, it's funny. The definition of an antichrist is basically anybody that denies that Jesus is the Christ is the definition of an antichrist. And you know they bless the Antichrist, plural. They bless them. Yeah. And they think God's going to bless them for blessing the Antichrist. Boy, I've been kicked out of a number of churches for uh, pointing out that stuff. Genesis chapter 6. Now. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them. See, there's men and then there's they had daughters. Verse 2 says that the sons of God. Why would they use two different words, men and sons of God? Two different terms. Because in Job 38, the sons of God shouted for joy at the foundation of the earth. Adam didn't come until six days after the earth was created. Adam was actually considered, called a son of God. The son, uh, the son of God. Why? Because, well, you could say mother was his mother was Mother Earth, but his father was God. And who were the father, who was the father of the angels? Duh. Verse 2. And daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men. Wait a minute. Why are, you know, why are they sons of God and daughters of men? That they were fair and they took them wise of all which they choose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his day shall be 120 years. Before this, people were living cent uh, centuries. But God says, I'm going to put a stop to that. You live 120 years, that's it. That's your, basically, the expiration date, I guess you could say. Verse 4. 
There were giants, giants. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, there were giants in the days of Noah. There were giants in the days after that. What do you think Goliath was? Just some NBA prospect? Hey, Goliath, can you throw hoops? Can you dribble a basketball, dude? Yeah. So that people want you to think that sons of God were just believing men and the daughters, the daughters of men, the sons of God were godly men and the daughters of men were ungodly women. So all the men are righteous and all the women are ungodly and evil and wicked. And then they get married and have giants for children. Does that make sense? Me neither. But yeah, this is the nonsense that uh, modern day churches teach. That godly men married ungodly women and had giants. And then God said, oh, I'm going to kill everybody in a flood. I'm going to kill them all. I'm sick of this. Yeah. So how do believing men and unbelieving women have giants for children? Huh? Uh, you know, then they'll say, if, well, if you teach this, then you're teaching Kabbalah or uh, you're teaching uh, Greek mythology. Who is Thor? Thor was the son of Odin with a human woman. Who is Hercules? Hercules was the son of a human woman with, uh, I think it was Zeus. Yeah, you know, this kind of stuff, you know, there, there's some kind of a basis to all this stuff, if you ask me. Verse 4. Oh. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, and they became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. Hercules, Thor, there you go. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart were only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he'd made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Why didn't the Lord just tell those godly men to preach to their ungodly women? Because they, those godly men didn't exist. They were fallen angels, polluting the bloodline. They wanted to destroy the line of Christ before he was even born. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. Now, God, when God repents, it means sorrow. God changed, you know, he's sorrowful that he, this happened. When man needs to repent, they need to repent of their wickedness. Because man is born in sin. God is not. God has no sin. But you got people that'll, well, devils that'll tell you that uh, godly, well, they'll, they'll tell you that repenting means the same thing for a man as it does for God. I don't think so. Man needs to repent of their evil and wickedness and change their ways. God does not. And if you think that uh, you listen to people like Anderson, he'll tell you that it just means to, repenting means to change your mind from unbelief to belief. But if you read Revelation chapter 1, in Revelation chapter 2, God told, Jesus told the believing church to repent. Repent of what? Their unbelief? How can they be a church if, they, if, they, if they're in unbelief? No, he's telling them to repent of their works. 
That's what he's telling them to repent of. Don't believe me? Go to Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 2, where God tells the ch believing church to repent. They're telling them to repent of their deeds, not their unbelief, because the church believes. Revelation chapter 2, verse 1. Unto the angel of the church, church of Ephesus write, these things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. And of course, the devils will tell you they're talking about Paul, but they're not. And has borne and has patience for my name's sake, has labored and has not fainted. So they've borne the burden for Christ. They've, they have patience for his name's sake. They've labored and they haven't fainted. And that name's sake is Jesus Christ. Jesus who is Christ. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Hmm. Now he's talking to the church at Ephesus. Church, church, church. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent. Anderson will tell you, repentance means, repent means to turn from unbelief to belief. So did this church unbelieve? No, they believed. But, but he said, Jesus is saying, go to your first works, your first love. You've left your first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art falling and repent and do the first works. Or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Ah, okay. So when God repents and when we repent, it's not the same. Genesis 6, 7. And the Lord said, I will destroy man, whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. God was sorry he made this mess. Well, he didn't make it a mess, but he created everything and it became a mess. I, I you know. Believe it or not, God's, the Bible says that God created evil. Yeah, he did. He created the anointed cherub, good, who turned against God and tried to kill him in a war in heaven. And he became Satan and the devil. And who created him? God did. Is he evil? Absolutely. What is devil? Devil's just uh, evil with a capital D in front. So technically, God created evil. It wasn't originally evil. Originally, everything was good. Read Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2. God looked upon everything he'd created, and it was good. But it corrupted itself. For it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace, grace in the eyes of the Lord. Oh, yeah. People will tell you there's no grace in the Old Testament. They're liars or fools or ignorant. Take your pick. Maybe uh, D, all the above. I don't know. But Noah found grace in in the eyes of the Lord. Now listen to verse 9 carefully. These are the generations of Noah. Uh, generations. Do you know what the, uh, the word generator comes from this root word? Uh, as in creating or making power. Look at the first four letters of generation. G-E-N-E. -E. 
genetics. Yeah, gene. And we're not talking about a name. Like RNA and DNA. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. Why would the Bible say he was perfect in his generations? Because his bloodline had not been corrupted by the sons of God, the fallen angels. Oh, Bob, you're really stretching there. Oh, really? Well, let's keep reading and we'll find out. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. Why would the Lord, why would the Bible say perfect in his generations? You know, sometimes the Bible says what it means and means what it says. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. It wasn't corrupted. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, which is not kosher, by the way, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. You ever heard of a cyclops? Yeah. Uh, all those stories about cyclops and giants with one eye and what have you, you know, you kind of wonder, is that just myths or is that the collective memory from time past? Verse 12. And God looked upon the earth and behold, it was corrupt for all flesh, for all flesh, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Flesh corrupted his way upon the earth. Oh, boy. All right, let's go to uh, Matthew 13. We're going to read the words of Jesus. 13, 24, Matthew. Matthew 13, 24. Another parable put he, Jesus, put he forth unto them, saying, I got an entire playlist on this, the wheat and the tares. Four hours, I think, or two or three hours, I don't know. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares. What's a tear? It's a, it's a weed. In the Middle East, they got something that looks just like wheat. It's a weed. It's called the bearded darnel, D-A-R-N-E-L. When it's young, a farmer, an experienced wheat farmer, cannot tell the difference between wheat and the darnel, the weed, the tares. Can't tell the difference. It's not until you get ready for harvest, that's when you can tell the difference. Because the wheat will have wheat kernels and the darnel will have black poisonous seeds. Yeah, that's the, the tares are poison, people. Yeah. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst thou not sow good seed in thy field? Hey, uh, excuse me, sir. Um, didn't you plant wheat in this field? I mean, you know, from whence hath it tares? Where do these weeds come from? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. So the servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, Ye root up also the wheat with them. Nope, it's not time. Let both grow together until the harvest. 
And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares. Gather ye together first the tares. Gather ye together first the tares. Does that sound like the pre-trib rapture? No. This one verse, this one scripture, destroys the pre-trib rapture. Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Huh. All right, so let's skip down to verse 34. All these things spake Jesus unto the multitudes in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them, that it might be fulfilled which is spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. Hey, uh, Jesus, can you explain this to us? Because we're confused and we don't get it. Verse 37. He, Jesus, answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. Now, what did Jesus call himself all the time? He called himself the Son of Man. Verse 38, the field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. What? Chaplain Bob, you're just, you're way out there, dude. I don't think so. But the weeds, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather that out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire, there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Do you get it? The tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world and the reapers are the angels. I don't have to explain anything. Jesus says it quite plain if you ask me. Sheesh. In Matthew 24, verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days, Shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. This is this is right in Revelation. This is in Revelation. Maybe I should find that real quick. Now in Joel chapter 3 and verse 15, and by the way, I did a commentary on Joel, minor prophets. Uh, let's take a look at this in context. Yeah, Joel chapter 3. Joel 3.13 Put ye in the sickle for the harvest. Didn't we just talk about the harvest? Yeah. The harvest is ripe. Come, get ye down, for the press is full, the fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, the sun and the moon shall be darkened, 
and the stars shall withdraw their shining. There's a New Testament reference to this in Revelation. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So shall you know that I am the Lord your God, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass through her any more. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 6. Um, Revelation is not in chronological order. No. I mean, when you get to 20 chapters, 20, 21, 22, yeah. But it skips around. Revelation 6, verse 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Uh, some people think that this is the Antichrist. Uh, I don't see it. I, I actually think this is Christ. I really do. But I could be wrong. Verse 3, And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. Funny, red is the color of communism. Soviet Union, Chinese flags, red. Oh, yeah. And communism has killed more people on this earth in the last hundred years, or a little over a hundred years, than, yeah. Some people say as many as a hundred million have died under communism. I don't know if that's true, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's very close to that or more. So, verse 5. And when he had opened the third seal, I saw the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the fourth beast say, A measure of wheat for a penny. A measure of wheat was basically enough to make a loaf of bread. And what was a penny? A penny back in them days is not what a penny is now in the U.S. A penny back in the days of Jesus and in the days of Rome, was the wages of an unskilled laborer for an entire day. So you're talking a loaf of bread for a day's wage for an unskilled laborer. Famine, people. A measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked and beheld a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death. Death! And hell followed him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill them with the sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. Are these beasts of the earth four-legged beasts? Or two-legged beasts? Well, if you live in the city, I would imagine they are two-legged beasts. But hey, uh, what do I know? And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar. I saw under the altar, the altar of God, the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Remember Matthew 24, Mark 13? They'd bring you up to councils and in the synagogues? And the Holy Ghost would speak through you? I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? 
And if you listen to the Jehovah's Witnesses, false witnesses, they'll tell you soul sleep. Oh, when you die, you die. And it's it's like Christmas, you know, you go to sleep as a kid before on Christmas Eve and you'll wake up and it's Christmas morning. No, these these dead souls, well, these souls that were their bodies were taken from them. Why they were crying with a loud voice, asking the Lord, How long, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Soul sleep is a heresy. It's a lie. Verse 11. And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. There will be a day when the last person who will die in Christ will be fulfilled and then Christ will return with the angels as the reapers to gather up the tares, the weeds. But if you listen to those churchgoers, they'll, oh, no, 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 that's not true. God wants everybody to be saved. God loves everybody. Never mind that Malachi 1 says that God hated Esau. See, these people are deceivers. Or they're possessed of devils. Or they are ignorant, deceiving and being deceived. I don't know. Maybe all the above. Verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair. And the moon became as blood. Ah, the sun's not going to give her light, remember? Matthew 24, Joel chapter 3. Yes. And the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Do you know the fig tree is the symbol of Judah? Yeah. Yeah. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. Oh yeah. You wonder why all these rich people are building bunkers? Right here. And they said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us! Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? And the answer is, nobody that is not in Christ. None of them are going to be able to stand before the Lord. None of them. For every knee shall bow and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. All right, let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. This is one, another one of the reasons why uh, those people, will they hate Paul. Paul throws all the false heresies under the bus. Not only runs them over, but he backs up and runs them over again. You know that that's why they uh, that's why they they lie about Paul. I mean, you're gonna throw away all Paul's writings. You got to throw away the Book of Acts because the Book of Acts records where Paul interacted with the apostles. And you're gonna tell me the Holy Spirit didn't tell the apostles that Paul Paul was a fake? Really? That's what they want you to believe. Second Peter confirms Paul as a. Uh, an apostle, a beloved brother, throw that away too. Throw away the book of Acts, throw away all Paul's writings, and what are you left with? Not much. Not much. No, they're deceivers. When you hear people say Paul was false, they're fools, whatever. Second Peter says they wrestle as they do the other scriptures under their own destruction. 
Because if you don't believe Paul, you don't believe the one that sent Paul, which is Christ. All right, let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We're going to close this two-hour study out. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus and by our gathering together unto him. There you go, people. Um, you know, uh, this is talking about our gathering unto Jesus. This is talking about the end times. The coming of Jesus in the clouds with glory, right? Verse 2, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Pre-tribbers will tell you that the day of Christ and the day of the Lord is two different events. They're not. Basically, what they're doing is telling you that Jesus Christ is not Lord by telling you that the day of Christ and the day of the Lord is different. They're denying that Jesus Christ is Lord. They'll tell you the day of Christ is the pre-trib rapture and the day of the Lord is the second coming. What, there's a one and a half coming or is it the third coming or... I, uh, Verse three. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, what day? The day of Christ. For that day shall not come, the second coming. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. We're here, people, the falling away. When I was a kid in the 60s, women wore scarves over their head. They wore long skirts. People had respect for each other. The streets were safe to walk in the city of Miami, which was one of the top 30 largest cities in the United States. It was safe. Mother never had to work after I was born. People made enough money. They only had to work one job. Dad only worked one job. I was able to support a family of four. My, how things have changed. People used to leave the keys in the car because they didn't want to lose the car keys. Now it'd get jacked. People used to leave the doors open of their house because everything was safe. Nobody, there was no such thing as home invasions. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin, the Antichrist, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. There's only two sons of perdition in the Bible, Judas Iscariot and this one right here. The man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he is God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And if you belong to a group called the Preterists, they'll tell you that this happened in 70 AD, that Roman general sat in the temple of God and said, I'm God. So this is all past to them. Uh, what do you think the emperor of Rome would have said if a Roman general went to the temple and said, I'm God, worship me. You think the uh, emperor of Rome is going to worship a general? Uh, this is the stupidity of people that tell you that this all was all pa happened in the in 70 AD. They're idiots. They're fools. They're deceived or deceivers or ignorant. This has to be the future. If it didn't happen in the past, it has to happen in the future. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? Paul's telling you, yeah, when I was with you guys, I told you all of this stuff. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. 
For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And some people will say, oh, that's the Holy Spirit being taken out of the way. No. You know, if the Holy Spirit is taken away from the earth, no one is going to be saved. I believe it's Michael the angel. Maybe Gabriel. I don't know. There's going to come a day when God tells the angel to step aside and let evil do its thing for the final test. Yes, people, we are on it. We are in a test. Pass or fail. You are either in the kingdom or you're out of the kingdom. God don't grade on a curve. For the mystery of iniquity of death already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Miracles, people. Remember Job chapter 1? Yes. Power, signs, and lying wonders. Miracles. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. People don't love the truth. They want to have lies taught to them. God loves everybody. Say a sinner's prayer and you're eternally secure. Once saved, always saved. It don't matter what you do. Be a hitman for the mafia. Uh, it don't matter. Be a prostitute. It don't matter. You know, once saved, always saved. You said a 30-second sinner's prayer. You're saved forever. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God, not Satan, God, shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. God's going to deceive these people. Yes, God can and does deceive people. When you don't want the Lord more than anything else in this world, he can and will deceive you. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. There you go. Pleasure in unrighteousness. Verse 13. But we, now that's them, but we are, are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning, God hath from the beginning chosen you. Do you know that God chooses? Yeah. From the beginning, God chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Verse 14, whereunto he called you, by our gospel, to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions that ye have been taught, whether by word or by epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. People, I hope you learn something. Because boy, I'll tell you what, we are getting ready to see a rough ride. There's going to be a one world government. That's going to sound like, oh, one world government. That's great. They're going to say, no more wars. Peace and safety. Oh, wait a minute. Where? I think I read something about that before. Yeah. 
Well, let's take a look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 real quick. We're getting ready to close this Bible study out. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1. But of the time and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. See, then they'll say, oh, it could happen any second now. No. The thing is, the man of sin has to come first. We read that previously. And another thing, to the unbelievers, it's going to come as a thief in the night. Yeah, but for us that are paying attention, that know God's word, when we see the sun and the moon darkened, we see the man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast, the antichrist come, you'll know it's getting close. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. And people, let me tell you something. The Antichrist comes before Jesus. No pre-trib rapture. Verse 3. For when they, for when they shall say, peace and safety. Oh yeah, one world government. No more wars between nations. Peace and safety. Then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. See, we're not in darkness. The day of the Lord's not going to come upon us like a thief. We're going to be watching. Verse 5. Ye are all the children of light. And the children of the day, we are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that are drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath. And people, there's a big difference between being killed for the faith and being destroyed in the wrath of God. Big difference. But they'd have you believe that, that Stephen being stoned for his faith in Christ is the wrath of God. It's not. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we awake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. Oh yeah. And with that. I think I'm going to close this out. So, people, it's going to be a bumpy ride. Jesus said, endure unto the end. Keep that in mind. All right, well, this is Chaplain Bob Walker. Like I say, anybody wants all my Bible studies, write me at uh, Palm Beach Weddings dot com weddings with an s or chaplain bob at protonmail.com oh yeah and um i will uh send me a send me a usb drive and i'll copy all my work and you can have it and i don't copyright anything it's all to the glory of god you can post it or throw in the garbage for all i care one day all this is going to be illegal. Believe me. You wouldn't believe the hard, the problems I have just posting this stuff. I mean, it, it my work gets deleted. No matter where I post it, it gets deleted. It's getting to be bad. I'm surprised YouTube hasn't deleted my channel yet, but that's going to come one day, so... All right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.